Hi there! We are going to go over the final exam review today for Computer Fundamentals. This will be the last exam you take in the course. Um, please keep in mind it is worth 200 points, which is a quarter of your grade. That's huge, okay? So make sure that you are taking notes. You may also um, kind of pause your video in order to write some stuff down. Um, it's probably best since you're watching this on YouTube um, to do full screen so you can see the whole thing. All right, uh, here we go. Okay, implementation tools are tools to create and share data and information. The most popular and the ones that we have worked with are uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. When doing a complex presentation, it's best to start out with a paper and pencil so you can design your plans, erase as needed, and then decide on the best program to be able to achieve this. So, yes, it's okay to use real, actual, physical tools before you use your uh, computer tools. In Excel, you can work on several different worksheets in the same spreadsheet. As you remember, this is where you would find them. You can name them, okay? You can click on them to go back and forth between the screens, okay? Um, uh, and you even created some new worksheets. Uh, if you remember the mobster criminal data that we used. All right, um, when you are using Word, it will check both spelling and grammar. A red line under a word means that it is misspelled. A green squiggly line, sorry, I can't make squiggly lines in PowerPoint, <laughs> under a word or phrase means that you have a grammatical error. Okay, so um, maybe if you use a word twice, or if you use like T-H-E-I-R there instead of T-H-E-R-E -E there, um, word will usually catch that. Um, if you say I has, Instead of I have a new class, um, it will catch that, okay? So it will check both spelling and grammar. So not only is this in your exam, but that is stuff that you should know for writing assignments in school as well, okay? There's so many times I get assignments with lots of misspelled words and lots of grammatical errors that they're written green lines all over the place. So pay attention to those. When using different color text, remember that you must be able to see the text easily. It needs to pop, okay? The best use of that, as you can see here, um, so check and see which of these stands out more. Probably the black on the turquoise, because there's a bigger contrast. Those two colors are very, very different. One is um, kind of uh, has a light value, and one has obviously black is the darkest value, whereas red is kind of a medium value and black is a dark value. So you want those two to contrast each other really well. The equal count function in Excel calculates how many cells with data were in the range. So count doesn't add up the sum of those cells it only counts the cells themselves, okay? So the equal sum function calculates the total or the sum of the cells in that range. Let's take a look at an example. So for example, if I have this list of numbers, the equal count of the following numbers would be five because there are five numbers there. And the equal sum would be 49 because if you add them all up together, it equals 49. Um, one thing that you've had to do in the past in an exam, and you will have to do again, um, is to count the number of cells in a range. Now, remember that you are counting both C5 and C12 and everything in between. Okay. Um, now, if you're having a hard time doing this, write, write it out or draw it out on a scratch piece of paper next to you. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. 
Okay, so the answer is 8 because you have to include both C5 and C12 and all the cells in between. So if you count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's 8 cells. There are several different ways to sort things in Excel. So there is ascending over here that goes up, descending that goes down, and shuffled that is just in random order. Okay, So you're going to have to identify um, a series of numbers as ascending, descending, or shuffled. Things to keep in mind about emails. You want to use the CC and BCC functions sparingly. We don't need to be sending out lots of um, unnecessary emails to lots of people. Uh, of course, always think carefully about what you write. Avoid jokes that can be misinterpreted. Avoid all caps because it appears that you are yelling. Students do that in K-mails quite often to try to get our attention, but I guarantee you, you will get a better response from your teachers or from anyone if you use proper spelling, grammar, and please no caps, okay? So also avoid overuse of exclamation points. It also appears that you're yelling. And only use reply all when absolutely necessary. So kind of the same thing as CC and BCC. Only, you only want to send the, the minimum amount of emails out at a time and only emails that are completely relevant to that person. Okay? We often, the teachers, get, um, get group emails from our administration, let's say from um, the principal, and it would be totally unnecessary for us to say, hey, thanks, by the way, can I get some time off? you know, um, and use reply all. That is not anyone else's business, right? So that would be one example of when not to use reply all. Okay, how to address emails. To is the person you are directly addressing. CC are people who should see this as an FYI for your information. And a BCC is people who should see this, but their names are not vis visible to other per recipients, and you use it for privacy. So you can use BCC, which means blind carbon copy. Okay, carbon copy is uh, just means the exact same thing. Okay, you're sending the person BCC the exact same email that you are, and the two and the CC. So you want to do that when you want to send the same message to a group of people, but who but want to prevent a global reply. Okay, so when you hit reply all, it does not go to the BCC people. It only goes back to the two and the CC people. Okay, one thing we learned is um, different, uh, I guess, methods, not methods. Um, I'm not thinking of the right word. Storage units, I guess, of information. So one kilobyte is a thousand bytes, one megabyte is a million, and one gigabyte is a billion. So I want you to remember KB, MB, GB in that order because you need to know which is the most, which is the, whoops, sorry, which is the least, and which is in the middle. All right, history of search engines. The main thing that I want you to, um, you know, go ahead and read through this, but the main thing that I want you to remember from this is Archie, which was actually created in, and came out in 1990, was the very first search engine. All right, task manager, as you can see, there's an example here of a Windows task manager is a program within the operating system that provides detailed information about the performance of your system and the programs running on your system currently. 
okay? It can also be used to detect and end a hanged application. So if something, you know, it's the circle's going around and around and around and around, like it's thinking and thinking and thinking, it's just not going anywhere. So you can open your task manager um, and, let's see, come down, you can click on like system information and then end task. All right, intellectual property is an original creation of the mind. It's a legal term. So intellectual property could be a song. It could be a piece of artwork. Um, it could be a photograph. It could be a poem. Okay, it's something that you create only from your mind. And there, you actually have rights to that. You, there are copyright rules um, where that say that if you create something with your mind, it belongs to you and no one else can use it for, um, for their benefit. All right, in PowerPoint, slide transitions. You guys remember how to do those. They are good because they clearly show that a transition is happening. So from one slide to the next, and the transition is easier on the eye. They also catch the viewer's attention during a presentation when used for emphasis. Kind of keeps your attention a little bit. All right, from the tri slide transition menu, you can um, select a transition, change the speed, which is right up here, and then add sound, which is right here. So three things. You can choose a transition, change the speed of the transition, and add some sound to it. All right, web browser is considered a software application that allows people to access, retrieve, and view information on the internet. The most popular web browsers currently in use are Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Opera, and Safari. Interestingly enough, I had never even heard of Opera before. So I don't know what that says about me, or if Opera's just not that, really not that popular. Um, but so, as, as you, I want you to notice that we're not talking about Google, the search engine, we're talking about Google Chrome, which is the actual browser. Okay, two completely different things. The main purpose of a search engine, now this is different, is to search for information on the internet. So you can open up a website on your browser that is um, a search engine. The main search engines currently, oh I'm sorry, that should say being used are Google, Bing and Yahoo. I use Google hands down all the time, never anything else. Works the best for me and that's just what I'm used to. So anyway, that's it you guys. Um, if you've taken notes and memorized everything in here, you are going to ace that exam. Um, if you take the exam early enough, uh, let's say maybe before Oh, let's say before noon on Thursday, and you don't do well, if you contact me um, through either the teacher contact information phone number, to so go to teacher contact, and there's my phone number, you can call me, you can text me, and you can k-mail me. Um, make sure you say who you are and what class you're in, because I have lots of other classes. And just let me know that you would like to retake the final exam. And if you do that by noon, on Thursday, Thursday is when it's due, I will reset it for you and you may take it again. All right, thanks guys. And you know, it's uh, my intuition, my uh, wants to, my natural instinct, I guess, wants me to tell you good luck. But luck really has nothing to do with it. It's all about hard work. So work hard and earn a good grade on your final exam.